Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. And I think it's fair to say that everyone wants to make more money. I mean, why not? But do you know what it takes to produce more profit in your business? I'm going to give you some practical steps to help increase your bottom line, but they're not going to be what you think. They're going to be a little bit different outside the box, maybe not, but there is one essential business skill, life skill, if you will, that you need in order to increase your profit. Now, increasing your profit doesn't always mean reducing your expenses, although that's part of the process. There are certain things that are costing you money that are ruining your profitability because they're taking too much time, too much energy, too many touch points, uh, all those types of things. So what I'm calling this is finding the holes in your bucket and plugging them. And the holes aren't always financial. A lot of times the holes are mental blocks. They are us getting in our own way. And they're just plain and simple lack of organization. Now, my super organized people, before you click off in next episode, just listen in and lean in because I could also use your advice. If you have some organizational skills that are top notch and you want to share it with the rest of the group, please come to mommyincome.com forward slash join us with the code word holes. And we would love to have your feedback about this, plugging the holes in your bucket. And you'll know more about this by the end of the episode. So if you have any organizational skills to share that aren't going to be mentioned here, um, or even just expand upon it, we'd love to hear your feedback. Most people struggle in one area or another when it comes to organization, but I believe it is the number one business essential skill that you need in order to increase your profits. Because honest to goodness, the profits aren't really in, oh, okay, I bought this for five bucks and I'm selling it for 10 and I got a $5 profit. There's so much in between that and what it costs and the time and energy that it takes to earn that profit that you want to make sure that you're doing it in the most efficient way possible. And honestly, if you're disorganized, you're losing money left and right. You just don't know it. You just don't know it. Every minute that you spend disorganized, at least in some form, like I don't care how you organize yourself in your life. We're going to talk about practical ways to get and stay organized when it comes to your Amazon business here. But if you are disorganized, you're it's costing you a lot of money. And the reason I can say that to you is because I know firsthand, unfortunately, My own disorganization has hit me in the face a couple of different times this summer, and it made me realize that I had holes in my bucket, that I was just letting the water drain out, the money, the time, the profits, the everything. That's what drains out of your bucket. It's not always a financial drip. Sometimes it's a, I wasted two and a half hours looking for a piece of paper that I desperately needed because I didn't put it in its rightful home. And the reason I didn't put it in its rightful home is because it didn't have one, because I didn't create a rightful home for it. So it was just amongst all the papers that I had to then search and sort through in order to find that. So don't, (laughs) don't be like me. Don't be so disorganized that it takes you hours to do something that literally could have taken you 30 seconds. A stitch in time saves nine. Have you ever heard that? It's an old saying that talks about if you do everything up front, And properly, you don't have to backtrack and do things that you should have done in the beginning that now are costing you time. And we've been over this. Time is worth more than money. It is. Just look at your paycheck. And what would you rather have? Do you want to increase in pay? What's your dollar per hour worth according to your boss? If you're your own boss, when's the last time you figured out how much you're earning versus how much time you're spending. What's your time worth? Because two and a half hours of my time to search for a piece of paper that should have been in a file was very detrimental to me. I was literally upset for days about this particular paper and the disorganization that I have. And I just kind of sent me through a, 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 a tailspin of like, oh my gosh, I'm so disorganized and all this stuff, which is the birth of this episode, of course. But I'm sharing these things, you guys, because I too struggle. 
I struggle with holes in my bucket and profitability in my business. But when I see and when I notice, I take action because I don't want to lose two and a half hours looking for a piece of paper. A very important one, a vehicle title. Something that you actually need, that it costs a lot of money and energy if you have to replace it. It's an official document, you know, those types of things. It's not life and death. You know, no one's going to die if I can't find the the vehicle title, which I did. But that's the whole point, is that vehicle titles and important papers and things like that, they should be in a, have a home and have a place and have be organized. And this one might have slipped through the cracks, but the idea here is that when we aren't organized, we spend more time and energy and sometimes money getting ourselves out of trouble that we should have never been in to begin with. I should have never had to spend two and a half hours looking for a piece of paper. It should have been in a file and I should have had a file. Oh, this is the vehicle title. Put it in the vehicle title file or put this in the safe place folder. I don't care what you call it. I want you name it. I don't even care about your systems and processes, although we will talk about that, um, because you need to have one. And that's part of the problem. And sometimes our laziness or our busyness gets in the way. Y'all, the worst thing about the two and a half hours I wasted looking for this piece of paper is that I actually have a file that's all vehicle related files. And every other title And every other insurance paper and proof of insurance and all the papers you signed to get car loans and things like that are all in this file. But this one piece was missing. It came in the mail and I remember opening it and be like, oh, I need to file this. But it went all into a pile of papers that then got stacked up and shuffled around. And thank goodness it didn't get thrown away. But I'm saying all of this so that we can understand and realize that we all have different holes in our buckets and there's things we can do that 30 seconds it would have taken me or maybe one minute to walk from this room to this room, grab the box down, open the file, put it in the vehicle immediately. I could have saved myself two and a half hours. Hindsight is 2020, right? So it's like never again. Have you ever, you've always had those never again moments? Have you ever had a never again moment where you do something and you're so frustrated and you're like, never again will I do that? Never again will I <laughs> parasail. <laughs> That's a never will I ever, <laughs> never have I ever. Um, no, I have actually. And it was a horrible experience. It was very, very windy and, um, I usually have a strong stomach, but it was a really rough day. And they were like, oh, you're the last crew that's going out because it literally is um, too windy to have parasailers. It was a beautiful view, but I didn't enjoy much of it because I was getting ready to toss my cookies, like, I don't know, however, 100 feet in the air, wherever you are. Um, I didn't actually do that. I made it, but it was just like, it was one of those never again. Been there, done that, never again. I don't ever want to look for a piece of paper for two and a half hours ever again when there was really no reason to do so. There was no reason to do so because I had a file box for it and I didn't, just didn't put it there. How many times have we just not taken care of something? Listen, if it takes less than five minutes to do, do it immediately. Then it's out of sight, out of mind. You save yourself time, money, energy for later. Here's another example. You can get a ticket for not having car insurance. Uh, but you can get a ticket for having car insurance and not having a proof of insurance. (laughs) Ask me how I know this. (laughs) Again, me and my paperwork, right? I, I don't know what to say. The reality is, is that we lose time and money over and over again. If you don't, if you're rushing out of the house because you didn't leave yourself enough time to get somewhere on time, and then you get pulled over and get a ticket, that costs you. Or you hit somebody, or you hit all the red lights, or, you know, something happens because you're in a rush. That's lack of organization. Time management is simply organization of your time, paper management, all these things. So I'm trying to save you and me (laughs) all kinds of time and money and energy when it comes to this. We're going to find the holes and plug them because it's going to be worth it. It's going to increase your profits when you have a system and process. Why? Because when you have systems and processes and methods and ways and organization, no matter what that is for you, like some people will come into my space and be like, oh, you need all kinds of organization. And I'm like, what? This is fine. This works for me. It's something. It's something. I'm going to share with multiple ways for you to boost your profitability by getting organized. Because I truly believe that the more organized you are, which 
again, I'm going to say this again, y'all. I'm going to say it. I struggle with organization, which is why I'm sharing this with you. It's like built-in accountability, right? Somebody out there, can I get an amen from somebody in the back that struggles with organization like me? This is where I just take a brief pause and understand that somebody out there is saying amen and that they're with me. So if I were to ask you to do certain thing, do a certain task, let me try that again. If I were to ask you how you do a certain task, would you have an answer? Do you have a method by which you operate on a regular basis? Are you a fly by night, immediate in the moment, like the, all the fires are burning and you got to put them all out kind of thing? Or are you a planner? Because even my planner friends, even my super organized friends struggle in some way. Maybe they're really good at organization, but they're, they're worry warts and they can't pull the trigger. You know, I can have everything organized and ready to press go, but they won't press go. You know, we all have something that we struggle with. And so if you don't struggle with organization, then come give us all your tips because we need it. Okay, finding the holes in the bucket. There are holes everywhere in your time, in your, in your mindset, in your money, in your physical space. We all have holes in the bucket. So when I'm talking organization, I'm talking about little things that add up to big, big things after a while. Organizing your stuff. First and foremost, let's talk about the holes in the bucket with your stuff, your actual physical space, your, your physical space. <clears throat> Your, where do you process your inventory? If you are still processing in-house, which a lot of you still are processing your inventory in-house, whether it's arbitrage or wholesale or bundling or you're making your own bundles or whatever it is, you have a space, a dedicated space where you bring in your inventory and you organize that inventory and then you prep that inventory and get it out to Amazon. Where you process, where are your supplies? The first thing about organization is literally stopping and analyzing your process. And when someone challenged me to do this at one point, I was like, I don't have a process. And they're like, why? <laughs> and I thought, I don't know. I do. And they said, we actually do have a process. Can you try to explain it to me? And then when I was like, oh yeah, I guess I do have a process. I do this first and then I do this second and I do this third and then I do, like, okay, that's a process. And as soon as you identify your process, then you can start seeing where it's inefficient. So the first thing you need to really do is just identify the process by which you process your inventory. Where do you come into the house, the garage, the basement, wherever? Where do you put your inventory first? How do you unload it? How do you sort and organize it? Because the way to reduce the time is to reduce the touch points. So I'm going to challenge you to... Take a few minutes after this episode, of course, and take your notes or listen to it as you're doing it and press pause. And just with fresh eyes, walk into your inventory processing area and think about what you do first, second, and third. Just write that down. I do this first, then I do this, and then I do this. And the question is, do you do it the same way every time? And if your answer is no, my question is why? Nine times out of 10, the circumstances have not changed by which you say you do retail arbitrage and you've got like 10 bags to bring in from, you know, big lots or something like that. And you're bringing all your inventory in and it's all in bags. And then you set it someplace and then you have to rifle through it and organize it and say you bought 10 of these and four of these and all that. Then there's a sticker removal and then there's um, poly bagging or bubble wrapping. And then there, there's, there are steps. So if you, if you define, just take five minutes of your time say, what do I do first? What do I do second? What do I do third? And so on. And then look at that and say, oh, if I did this this way, or if I did this first, then I wouldn't have to do this or this. See, sometimes we just do things on, on autopilot. And we're just like, this is just how I've always done it. And this is how I figured out how to do it. And we don't actually take the time to analyze our processes and decide whether or not they work or not. I mean, you can make shift make something work, but is it the most efficient way? Well, can you save even 10 minutes of your process by organizing it differently in the beginning? 10 minutes. If you just three times a week, that's a half an hour of your life you just got back. What's that worth? A lot. It's worth a lot. 
<laughs> I don't care how much you get paid per an hour. 30 minutes of extra time can be spent in better ways. Earning more money, having more leisure time, taking a nap, having a cup of coffee and reading a book. 30 minutes is precious. So don't just look at it like, oh, well, that really only saves 10 minutes. It's not worth my energy. Spend five minutes. Write down your processes for your stuff. Where does it go? How do you physically process your inventory? Where do you store it? How do you scrape the stickers? Where are your tools? Y'all, I don't process anymore because I use a prep facility, of course. I use myprepcenter.com. Free plug for them. We love them. They're amazing. If you want a prep center, reach out to Nate. They would love to chat with you. Um, but before I had a prep center, I had all of my inventory in my house. I would get pallets from wholesalers. I would go retail arbitraging and bring all these bags in. And then I had to create this process and method. And I always used the U-shape method. And I had an apron at one point um, because I learned the hard way. I'm just like, I like to rush, rush, rush and just like get stuff done because somehow I get like a bunch of endorphins from like checking stuff off lists. I'm like, I'm a list person, but I am more so now than ever. Um, but I like to get done with something. Just done. I like the word done. It's done. It's all done. Yay. You know, so um, I used to just rush through to get stuff done. But I didn't realize that if I just took my time the first few times, that I could create a more efficient process when I could get done faster. Now you talk about done being exciting. Done faster is like, yeah. That means I get more me time. That means I get more time to do fun stuff. And I don't know. So I, I like faster. And so taking a five or 10 minutes and analyzing your process. And when I used to process, I had all my tools everywhere. And if the TV would be on or my phone would be somewhere, I accidentally taped my phone up into an FBA box once and I couldn't find my phone anywhere. I searched the trash. I searched all this stuff. And finally, I was like, where did I have it last? Well, it was over here on the table somewhere else. It fell into one of my FBA boxes and I had already taped it up. So I had to undo the box, find the phone, you know, amongst the dunnage and be like, okay, how can we not do this again? Well, that made me realize that my tools were all over the place. My Sharpie, my Scotty Peeler, my um, you know, just the different stuff that you use, your box cutter and whatnot, were all over the place. And so I did what I thought would be helpful organization wise. I got an apron. And so while I was processing my inventory, I had this apron, kind of like a tool belt. I thought of it like a tool belt. My husband has a tool belt. He is a carpenter and he has 150 different tools he's using on a regular basis and he wears a tool belt. Why? Because it's fast and efficient. What if he had to climb down off a ladder, walk five steps and get his knife every single time he needed to cut a piece of drywall? How inefficient was that? But now he just reaches down into his pocket, cuts what he needs to cut and puts it back in his pocket. It has a home. It has a place. Same for you. Organize your space and give it a permanent home. Now, once you say, oh, well, I have permanent homes for stuff, but they never end up there. The best way to trick yourself into putting things back where they go, giving them a home and keeping them there, is to pretend that it's not your space. Now, I know you're like, pretend, blah, blah, blah. I'm serious. Our brains are very adaptive. We're really smart people. So pretending is kind of a way of tricking our brain into thinking that something's real. OK, so just for a second, pretend that it's not your space. If you came to my house, my office, and you used my tape gun, would you just leave it on the table? If you come to someone's house and, you know, you, you would you just leave stuff? You wouldn't throw trash on the floor. You wouldn't, you know, things like that. So we tend to respect other people's space more than our own because our own is just like, eh, well, it just goes anywhere. It doesn't matter. I'll clean it up later, blah, blah, blah. But if you pretend for a second that you are hired help and you are here to do a job, you would come in, you would find the tools, you would use them and you would put them back where they go when you're finished because it's not your space. So I want you to pretend that you're in my space and how would you treat my stuff? How would you come in here and process? And then would you leave your stuff all over the place and garbage and trash everywhere and, you know, all haphazard? Or would you attempt to be excellent? I think you would. So be excellent for yourself because more organization means you've just made more money in less time. If it takes you an hour to make $100 of profit and then you do that in 30 minutes, you just gave yourself a double raise. You doubled your profit. 
because you did it in less time. Organizing your things and keeping them a home. So if you don't have a home for yourself, you're like, okay, if I asked you right now, where does your tape gun belong? Where is it right now? Do you know where? I know exactly where mine is. Mine's in the third bucket on the left in the blue one underneath the scale. Where is your tape gun right now? Does it have a home? If not, take the time to give your process an overhaul. Everything needs a home. Be prepared to start your work. Put on your tool belt. Even if you don't have a tool belt or you don't want an apron, get something that says this is my bucket of stuff and it all goes in here. When you use the Sharpie, put it back. When you use the tape gun, put it back. Keep them all out until they're done, right? Don't lose your phone. Don't tape it up in a box. <laughs> so what do you do if you don't have a dedicated space? If you don't have an office like I have, then you say, okay, when I get my retail arbitrage items, I come in, I put them on the kitchen table, and then they just sit there for a few hours, and then eventually I get my stuff. And okay, so have a tote, a bucket, a, a dedicated um, bin of some sort that you can put all of your stuff and all of your tools in and get them out and be just take a couple minutes before you start your process to think about your process. What is the fastest, not rush, rush, rush fastest, but what is the most efficient way to complete this process? Sometimes we just don't stop and think about that. What is the order in which these things have to be processed? And am I doing them in this order? If you find yourself all over the place, like, oh, I'm in the kitchen here and I'm doing this and I go back into my office because I forgot my tape gun and then, oh yeah, I need my blade. And you're, you're wasting steps and time and space. Set out to do your task by being organized. Create some sort of a assembly line or U-shape kind of workspace. So when I was processing retail arbitrage items, I had my office was like a U-shape and I had these six foot tables and it was like bringing in and you put it here and then you process it through this and then you do it this way. And it made this complete circular U-shape motion from the door all the way around the room back to the door. And so if you kind of create your assembly line or U-shape or circular um things that come in, they go all around the circle and they come out, it makes it more efficient. It flows a little bit better. And so in um, Start FBA Today, if you guys have uh, Start FBA Today, there is an entire video that I show you my organization and my process. Even though it's kind of a messy situation, um, I had a home and had placed for everything else. And there's, there's a video that shows the setup. So that's organizing your belongings, your actual physical space and your physical items, giving them a home, creating a process, pretending like you're processing this for someone else. Pretend that I'm standing there and I'm watching you. I'm with you. I'm seeing that. How would you want your space and your efficiency to feel? Now, I'm nobody. I'm not your judge. I'm not anybody else. I don't, I don't care about that. I actually, the struggle is real. Um, but I'm just using that as like an accountability method because I know that when I'm in someone else's house or their space or whatever, I tend to be extra careful, extra um, cautious, making sure that I leave it better than I found it. That's how I was taught. And so, but when it's my own space, I mean, y'all, if you could see my desk right now, you'd be like, this lady should not be talking to us about organization. Look at her desk. Actually, it's organized chaos, but it's still there. I'm a work in progress. So thank you for giving me the grace to grow with you. I appreciate that. I appreciate this space to be honest with you guys and say, I'm an organizational hot mess, but I'm learning. And the more I'm learning, I'm just passing it on to you because I don't want you wasting two and a half hours looking for a piece of paper. <laughs> I don't want you getting a ticket because you have insurance, but you don't have the proof because you forgot the paper, right? Okay, so your organization methods, your processes and systems and all those things. No, those are like, I don't know, corporate-y words and stuff like that. But like, what's your method? What's your process? No matter what it is for you, whatever works for you, you have to ask yourself, does this work for me? Is it working? Is it efficient? Um, but doing things the same way each time allows you to become more efficient no matter what it is. Your morning routine, do you get up at the same time? Do you do the same things in the same order to the point where it becomes automatic? That's what routines and processes and systems are. It's automatic. It's just something that's like, okay, this is just how we do things. 
we, we wake up, we go to the bathroom, we brush our teeth, we get in the shower, we, you know, we have this whole process and method for our days. Um, why can't we do that with our business? So one of the things that I encourage you to do is have a method and a process for your paperwork. Unfortunately, we're more and more digital these days, which then means you need digital organization. Um, f naming files and creating folders and putting, organizing your items and how you name them, naming conventions and things like that really can help you stay organized. How many times have you looked for an email or a file that you couldn't find because it simply wasn't put in the same, in, in the right place? Me, all the time. But I've learned now I've got folders and I've got folders within folders and then I've got extra folders within folders and I have physical folders and digital folders and uh, my desktop is still a hot mess, but we're working on it. So at the very least, I know how to name items. I name them the same way every time. I have the same process. When I do these podcasts, I have the same process that I use. Why? Because it makes it a no brainer. I don't have to think and therefore I don't have to figure stuff out. Once you've already got something figured out, doing it the same way over and over again just saves time, money, and energy. So repeat your processes. Paper is inevitable. Create a filing system. Color code or just give yourself a good excuse to go buy office supplies or you know, back to school is my favorite time of year because I'm kind of addicted to office supplies. Sticky notes and colored pens and pencils and timers and folders and all the things I literally love. Like, it'd be like Christmas. It's like, send me a box of like um, school supplies or like office supplies and like clips and ways to like organize all your desk and pretty things. I mean, I just love all that stuff. Um, so it helps me stay organized because I don't have time to look for the right color pens or the right color sticky. I need these things at my fingertips. Create a system for yourself. Take the time right now. Put it on your calendar. Next Friday at noon, you're going to create a fi paper filing system and you're going to file all the papers that you have and you're going to have a home for all of the papers so that when a paper comes in, it takes less than five minutes to put it somewhere. Actually, probably takes less than one minute to be like, oh, this is an, a, a wholesale invoice from, you know, ABC right there. Done. You don't even necessarily have to open it. You can just sort it. And then be like, okay, good. Now, immediate later. I know this is no brainer for most people. Most people probably aren't as disorganized as I am, but I just have a lot on my plate. Five people live here and we have life things and we have health things and we have school things and we have adult things and we have insurance things and business things, all the things. And they all create papers of some sort. Find a home for each kind of paperwork and at dis different stages immediate. I literally have, I wish I could show you right now. It's not right here. Well, like here's a folder of mine. I mean, for you podcast listeners, you can't see my video audio here, but like this is like personal file keep folder. And then this folder goes in the filing cabinet, but this is here right now. I also have one that's bright red and it says urgent. This is an urgent paper. And every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the first thing I take care of when I sit at my desk is the urgent folder. Why? Because it's urgent. Not everything's urgent. So that's a smaller folder. This is like urgent means I'm taking care of this this week within the next couple of days. And then something for next week and the weeks after that, those are things that you can uh, file for later. But organizing your papers. Why? I'm going to reiterate this. Why does this increase your profitability? You're like, this show is supposed to be about profitability. Why are we talking about organization? Y'all, because you can increase your profits, how much money you make, your earnings, your income. You can increase that by decreasing how long it takes you to make that money. So if you make $100,000 in six months, you make $200,000 a year, right? Or if you only work six months, you, you make $100,000. But if I taught you things that you could make that same money in four months, you just got a raise. You just got a raise. Are you making more than the $100,000? No, you're making it in less time. Time is more valuable. Because when you have more time, guess what you can do more of? Make more money. Or not. 
enjoy life. And I, I enjoy life making my money too. Like, so I enjoy most of life. <laughs> so it's not like, oh my gosh, I just want to get through my job so that I can get to real life. No, I, I have, I combine them all. So I, I feel like that. But like, you just have more time to do more of what you love. So that's awesome. And that's what this does. Organization creates efficiency. Efficiency means you can do the same tasks faster, which means you have more of your precious time to do whatever you want with, including making more money or not. Next thing about this organization is document the processes. This is the hardest one for most people. Even my super uber organizational friends out there, um, documenting your processes are something especially entrepreneurs struggle with because they're like, I'm an entrepreneur. I don't answer to anybody. No one's on my payroll. Maybe you're just a solopreneur and you don't have any VAs or you don't have a prep center. Or you don't have anyone else you're working with. Why document your process? What does it matter? Because at some point, I hope and pray that you want to outsource, that you don't want to do all the things all the time anymore. Take a cue from corporate America create SOPs, standard operating procedures for your business. One step at a time, 15 minutes twice a week. You're like, okay, working on SOPs for 15 minutes. What is my inventory processing SOP? Write it down. Cliff note versions if you have to. One step at a time. What is my processing for when I order my wholesale supplies? What do I do first? What do I do second? What do I do third? Document that. Just even if it's just a messy brain dump somewhat of just be like, okay, processing this, this, and this. Start a working document and add to it. Then at some point, if you get in a car accident and can't tell someone how to run your business, they can find the in case of emergency folder that you set up and do this, 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 and this. It could just be as simple as shut down my store, recall my inventory, whatever, take care of red flag items. I don't know what it is um, for you because I, I can't guesstimate how many employees you have, whether you have employees, whether you're by yourself, whether your spouse helps or not, you know, those sort of things. But all those things matter. You never know when you're going to need to teach someone else how to do what you do, even temporarily. Maybe there's an accident or you have to take care of an aging parent and it puts you out of town for three months or whatever the case may be. Or maybe it's just because you don't want to anymore. AKA my prep center. I just didn't want to process my inventory anymore. So thinking about those things, document your processes, even if it's vague. I don't want to say vague. Honestly, when you're documenting your processes, you should have a step-by-step, -step, do this first, this second, this third, as if you were teaching it to a 10-year-old. Because if for some reason you are unavailable, you don't want the whole ship to sink because you weren't organized. Your business can run as usual with a few little steps of someone else doing it. And it's overwhelming. I understand that. I'm overwhelmed sometimes just talking about these things, but 15 minutes, you've got 15 minutes to at least make a list of the processes that you may have or not have. And then the next 15 minutes, you'd be so surprised. Y'all, if you haven't gotten my 15 minute hustle guide and my 15 minute hustle ebook, you need to download that and get the book and listen to it and pay attention to it. Um, go to the website, mommyincome.com and get the, or go to 15minutehustle.com. It's a 15 minute hustle ebook and it comes with a chart. 15 minutes will save your life. How many times I've gotten so much done in 15 minutes just because I had a list and I was ready to tackle it. It doesn't mean you have to get all done with it. You don't have to spend a whole Saturday or a whole Monday morning or day organizing your paperwork. Just 15 minutes at a time. And if you're consistent about that, two, three, four days go by and all of a sudden it adds up. It's done. Don't discount the stitch in time saves nine. Do it ahead of time. Do it in up front. Don't I'll worry about that later. Worrying about that later is what is eating all of your profits. Because while you should be researching for new products to bring to the table, instead you're digging through a stack of papers because you didn't organize them before. And now you're losing money because you don't have any new products to bring to the table because you spent your research time organizing your paperwork. Set aside extra time and say, I'm going to do these things at this time. And then it doesn't take up any more mental space, which is number three in our practical steps to increasing your profitability by organization is organizing your thoughts. 
Oh, there's a concept. Have you heard of it? I'm not even sure if it's a concept at all. It's just something that I do because I need to. It's something that I'm like, okay, I have two businesses. So because I have two businesses, I have to stay focused on one at a time. I can't do a little bit of FBA stuff over here and then a little bit of mommy income podcasting over here and then a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I have to be extremely organized so that both of these things run smoothly. And how you do that is organizing your thoughts. You are truly free in life when you can control your thoughts and your emotions and yourself. So we do have the ability to control our thoughts. And one of the ways to do that is focusing, being intentional. That's what I mean by focus, being intentional about what you're working on, not multitasking. Now, when I say multitasking is like left for cooking and cleaning and, you know, things like that to where I love to multitask. I'm in the kitchen and I'm, you know, halfway doing the dishes over here while this pot's cooking and this and this, you know, those sort of things. Or you're you're simultaneously kind of doing the laundry and um, cleaning up the house, you know, well, because the laundry is kind of hands off for a time, but then you got to be in it and on it. So that's a little bit of multitasking. But doing one thing at a time with a beginning and an end really helps you increase your efficiency. Multitasking is overrated because honestly, we're never all in. You heard the word, have you heard the phrase, jack of all trades, master of none? Well, it's kind of me, but um, honestly, the problem with the jack of all trades and master of none is that they never master any real one real skill. They're like, oh, I do a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of that. And it makes me a little well-rounded. Um, that used to always be my excuse to where now I'm like, I don't necessarily want that anymore. I don't want to multitask. I want to hyper focus because what I realized is I can do things a lot faster and a lot more efficient and better when I'm just focused on one thing, one thing not pinging, ping-ponging him from this to that to this to that. And part of that comes with organization. How do I want to organize my day so that I'm not ping-ponging all over the place and that I'm actually thinking about the task and focusing on the task with intention? Part of this comes with making a schedule. Now, your schedule can be flexible and fluid, but knowing what you will be doing and how much time you plan on spending on that task or that project will help you feel less overwhelmed and more productive. It will just help you automatically feel that way. It's like a, it's a psychology thing I read not too long ago. I can forgive me for not remembering the reference. I read a lot of stuff on a regular basis and I don't always save all of it or the quotes or anything. So please forgive me in advance for not knowing exactly where this came from. But if some post on psychology and it said, just the thought of you being an underdog can damage your performance. This was talking about sports and some other things like that. And it's like, if you already think or people are talking or people have said, oh, they're the underdogs or, you know, they're, you know, this person's going to win versus them and whatever else. Just the thought of potentially being the defeated can make you choke in real life, to make you choke in the game. And that's the same kind of thing with business is that you can take the overwhelm out of situations when you can plan ahead what you're going to be doing and how much deliberate time you're going to spend on it. If you walk in defeated thinking, oh, I'm overwhelmed. I'm such an organizational mess. I'm never going to get anything done. Guess what's going to happen? Your actions are going to follow your thought process. But if you can confidently walk in and say, you know what? I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to spend an hour on this. I'm going to spend 15 minutes on this and then I'm going to move on. I'm going to feel good. You're going to be naturally more productive because you're Actions are going to follow your thoughts and your beliefs. Keeping your calendar, keep a to-do list and not keeping everything in your head. That is another way to organize your thoughts. Have a pen and paper or your phone note taking on your phone. I have like color note or if you have Evernote or if you have something on your phone that you can take notes on. Um, Having a place to put that thought eases anxiety eases worry, eases fear. I don't know about you, but when I lay down at night, I feel like everything that I didn't get done or things that I need to do that are things that I'm scared to forget floods my head the moment I'm trying to lay down and go to sleep. 
So next to my bed, there's a notebook. There's also my phone. And I have a note taking app on there. And if I feel like there's something that I really need to remember, I write it down and then I turn the light back off and go to sleep. I have a home for that now. I don't have to let it take up mental energy because I put it someplace. So if you're having negative thoughts or feelings or you're struggling or you're worrying about something, take those thoughts and put them somewhere. It doesn't mean you're dismissing them. It doesn't mean you're not dealing with them. It's not it doesn't mean that you're not going to talk about them or work on solutions. It's just a placeholder to say, I will think about this, worry about this, wonder about this, fix this the next day, tomorrow. You gave it a home. You gave it a place to be. Same thing with our emotions. Same thing with some of those things that we feel and think, those fears and worries. Give it a, put it on your calendar. I'm not kidding you. You guys you joke about this. It's like, okay, I'll worry about that tomorrow. Literally put it on your calendar. Worry about dance schedule. That's what I'm worried about currently. <laughs> the, the, the overwhelming dance schedule that we're going to have this year. Worry about dance schedule actually landed on my calendar. <laughs> no joke, because I've been worrying and worrying and it's taking up mental space, but I didn't have the time to deal with it and sit down with the, the, the tuition schedule and the calendars and who's going where what, because I just don't like those tasks. Those feel hard and overwhelming. So because of that, I put it on my calendar and worry about it on Thursday. So guess what I'm going to worry about it on Thursday? <laughs> Worry also means taking care of this task, right? But, you know, it's just like kind of gives yourself the mental freedom to be like, oh, I have a place for that. It's called, I'm going to worry about that on Friday or Thursday, not today. Because today I'm working on research and that's what I'm focusing on today. And just that alone, you, you acknowledge the thought, you acknowledge the worry, you didn't have to take care of it right away because not everything is 911. Not everything is a fire that you have to put out. Not everything is urgent prioritize what's most important, and then schedule the rest. Even if it's six months from now, be like, worry about basement closet. You know, that can be six months from now, but your calendar is going to come up. Give it a home. Keep a pen and paper next to you or your phone or whatever, you, however you take notes and write stuff down. Because when it's out of your head, because you're, you ever fear that you're going to forget something, I'm going to forget, I'm going to forget, I'm going to forget, I have to do it right now. People that have ADD, a lot of, I live with many here, uh, struggle with, I have to do it now because I'll forget. But then they forget the four things that they were supposed to be doing before they remember they forgot this thing. <laughs> the struggle is real. But so are the solutions. You just have to learn how to regulate that. If that's how you operate, great. Figure out how to make it the most efficient for you. Worry about that later. It takes 30 seconds. Voice memo. Do you have Voxer or, um, or any sort of voice memo? It's just like, okay, hey Siri, make a mental note to do this whatever. Getting the thoughts out of your head so you can stay focused on what you're supposed to be doing in that moment is a great way to stay organized with your thoughts. You have lots of them. You have hopes, you have dreams, you have fears, you have worries, you have concerns, you have emotion, you have sadness, you have happiness, you have all kinds of things. Give them a home, give them a place, give them a time on the calendar or whatever to deal with them. It's very freeing to be able to give yourself the time to do it. It doesn't have to be today or next week. You're just like, you know what? Okay, I'll do that. Two weeks from Friday. It doesn't matter when. Another thing to help organize your thoughts is to take breaks. We don't always have to be on hustle beast fast mode all the time. It's really healthy for you to take breaks I know I used to joke about the the cigarette smokers who always got breaks because they're like, oh, I need a cigarette. I'm going outside for a smoke. And I'm like, well, I don't smoke. Why can't I get a break? And I'm like, okay. So I started going outside. I used to do this when I worked at the restaurant. It was a long time ago. It was like the only outside job I ever had from entrepreneurship. But um, restaurant smokers, they'd all go outside. I'm like, hey, I'm going to go outside too. Why? Because I don't smoke, but they're getting a break. Why can't I get a break? You know? And so you have that mental break there. So it's not your cigarette break, but maybe it's your coffee break or your tea break or your walk to the mailbox break or just take a, the dog around the block one time, just one time. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You guys ready? Lean in and listen. Five 
minutes of a break is not going to affect your whole day. It actually will make it better. Just need to give yourself some mental breaks. It doesn't have to be a 30 minute walk. You can literally just get up out of your chair, walk to a mailbox and walk back. Just give yourself a break. It's not healthy to stare at your computer screen all day or sit in the same chair all day long. Five minutes of yoga, stretching, just a few basic stretches will help tune your brain into what you're doing. It'll increase increase oxygen and blood flow. You don't have to run a marathon to just move your body for a few minutes and change your position, change the room you're in, pick up your laptop and go into a completely different room. Those things can help us organize our thoughts a little bit more, just a change of scenery or pace. And taking control and organizing your feelings is the same way. I am a very emotional creature. Um, Some people are just really, really good at controlling and managing their emotions. Um, I ride the struggle bus when it comes to that. (laughs) I mean, not completely, but like, like I just, I'm definitely a very sentimental person. When the emotions that I have, you usually can tell I wear them on my sleeve. I'm not one for hiding them. Um, But I have had to learn to trust facts and not feelings because feelings come and go. Feelings come and go. How you feel about something today can be different than how you feel about it tomorrow. So we don't base our decisions, our profitability on things like emotions. How do I feel today? Well, I feel like garbage today, so I guess I'm not going to do anything. No, we trust the facts, not the feelings. And the facts are that we need to show up for ourselves every single day in some capacity. we're, We're worth it. We deserve it. Our family deserves it. The world deserves our contribution. So whether you show up big or you show up little, show up. Trust the facts that showing up is better than not. Don't trust the feelings and how you feel. I don't know how, if you only trusted your ooey gooey feelings all the time, most people wouldn't stay married. They just wouldn't. It's like one day I love you to pieces. The next day I want to throw you off a cliff. Sometimes it'd be like that, right? So we don't, but we're not going to trust that in that moment feeling and act and respond on that. No, we're going to take an inventory of our feelings, validate them, write them down, get them out, speak to, you know, do you ever, do you ever just talk out loud to yourself? I do that sometimes. I literally, when I need a brain break or I need a time out, I'll get my car and drive and I'll just literally talk like someone sitting next to me. Most of the time it's my prayers, but sometimes I'm just like venting out loud and no one's listening and they don't have to, but I have to say all the words because if I don't, they get trapped in my head and then that's bad (laughs) because when you're stuck in your own head, that's even worse. So acknowledge your feelings and ask yourself why you're feeling this way and compare that to the facts out there. Well, I feel this, but what's honestly true? I feel like my business is going under, but the truth is... I've lost a few thousand dollars or my sales weren't what they were last year, last week, last month. What does that mean? Your business is going under? No, that means your sales have slowed down and there's ways to fix that. There's holes in the bucket. How organized are you? Do you know exactly what you're doing tomorrow morning when you wake up in your day? If you don't, start there. Trust the facts and be accountable. Trust the facts and be accountable to yourself. You deserve that. You deserve more organization because it comes with increased profitability automatically. Now, does that mean if I get all my paperwork organized and I organize all my thoughts and I do all this stuff and set up all these folders and everything else that immediately I'm going to make $5,000 more next month? No. It's a continual cumulative effort. The work and effort that you put in today is not realized tomorrow. It's realized six months from now. In six months from now, if you do these organizational things that I'm teaching you right now, even 15 minutes a day for this, the rest of this month, I'm going to check in on you in February. And I'm going to see what are your results? If you got organized in September, how was your Q4? Were you on top of everything because you got organized beforehand? Try it. We always tend to make excuses about why things won't work. But you know what? You can't deposit excuses. 
So what's it going to be? You're going to take some action and you're going to try this organizational thing out and stick to it and see what happens? I sure hope you do, because that's what I'm doing. And I've already seen the fruits of my labor from two years ago when I got more organized. And now I'm even more organized than that. It will have a cumulative effort. And if you want to make more money in your business, all you have to do is increase your efficiency. And now you're making the same money in less time, which means you get a raise. So congrats. I'm proud of you for whatever step you're about to take. I know you're going to take a step. I know you're not just going to sit and listen to this and like, oh, yeah, I really should, could, would. What is one thing that you can do right now to increase your efficiency? It might just be opening up one folder, creating a folder, going to the store and buying folders, creating a digital folder. Maybe it's just analyzing your process and writing it down. Whatever it is, I'm proud of you for taking that step. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing right now when you're listening to the Amazon Files podcast. And I appreciate that. And you. Now go organize something, get your mental health in order, stay focused. You've got this. I'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.